let's plan a Disney trip. I am so excited for this video because first of all it means I'm going to Disney very very soon but also I've been wanting to do this for a really really long time but we hadn't kind of like finalized our plans so today what I'm gonna do is sit down and go through my Disney digital planner and kind of plan out our trip and everything that we have planned just so I can be super organized hi if you're new to my channel my name is Katie and I do lots of home and Disney vlogs so if you're interested in that kind of thing make sure you subscribe I'm also gonna be posting a lot over on my Instagram while I'm in Disney so make sure you follow me over there if you want more live updates of my Disney trip. I leave for Disney in just two weeks, which is super exciting. I love sitting down and doing these Disney planning videos because it combines my two favorite things that I like to do on my channel, which is digital planning and Disney. So I actually created this digital planner because I couldn't find the perfect Disney planner for someone who wants that like really pretty minimalistic vibe. So I actually made it for myself, but I do sell it on my Etsy page. So if you're interested, I will link it in the description for you. And I hope that you enjoy it because I love it, but I can't wait to show you how I kind of fill everything out. I've gotten a couple of comments of people wanting to see how I use my planner. So this is that video for you. I'm going to show you everything I do in my digital planner to get ready for a Disney trip. A little bit about my trip. I am going to Disney world in April. I'm going with my mom and my sister for another girl's trip. So if you've watched the vlogs before it's the same crew I go with a ton because we love Disney so we decided to do a little trip for flower and garden festival and we're actually doing a little bit longer of a trip and I'm really excited about that we're also doing park hopper which my family has never ever 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 done so I'm really intrigued to kind of see how that works and see if we like that but it's gonna be a really fun trip for sure so let's get into kind of what my planner consists of and I'll give you a quick walkthrough of the planner so this is my Disney planner so it has this really pretty cover page and then all of my stuff in here is for my last trip so I'll go through and kind of delete everything the nice thing about this planner is you can use it as many times as you need you just take everything out and you make a new one so the first page is a vision board so I love making vision boards I think it's a really nice way to visualize what you want your trip to look like and then the next page is a weekly view so again this is all for my last trip so I'm going to go through and erase it but just kind of an overview of what you want your week to look like so you can at a glance see everything that you have going on and then I have days in here for each day that we're going to be there so I have a spot for the outfit that I plan on wearing the date which park we're going to be going to how we're going to get there and then I do have um one thing I feel like I always forget is to write down what kind of food I want to try because I always see things that I want to try and then I forget about them so I do have a spot specifically for writing down what food you want to try as well as just kind of like the must do's that we really want to do while we're there and then I have kind of all the time throughout the day so you can actually plan your day so I'll do one of these for each park that we're doing so for each day I'll have a day all planned out so that's kind of the rundown of my planner so I'm gonna go through and kind of erase all the stuff that I had planned for my last trip and then I'm going to start writing down the things we have planned for this trip I think I'm gonna make my vision board last which I would not normally do if I was just starting to plan a Disney trip I'd probably make the vision board first and then plan the trip based off that kind of think like what do I want the trip to look like because we basically have the whole trip planned already I'm just going to do my weekly plan do my daily plans and then I'll go back into the vision board. At the end of the video, I'll kind of walk you through what our plans are for the trip, which I'm really excited about. I have not lit this candle since my last Disney plan with me, so I think it's a good occasion to light it again. It's the 50th candle from the 50th anniversary of Walt Disney World, and I love this smell. I wish I would have bought like 17 of these candles because they smell so good. So I like never want to burn it, but this is the perfect excuse to burn it because the smell just reminds me of Disney and of the 50th, and it smells exactly like a resort lobby and I did make myself a latte as well so we'll kind of sip on my latte light a candle and start kind of planning out my Disney trip Okay, so because we have more days on this trip than we had on our last trip, I'll have to add a few pages. So the way I do that is I count how many days. So it's our travel day and then we have three park days, three and then a rest day. So you just slide it to the right and then you press add new page and it duplicates it. I'm 
on with the weekly planning portion I kind of forgot to mention my process when I'm going through this basically there's a couple things I look at so obviously I have to open my app to see what time my flight is things like that I look up everything I go to the my Disney experience app and I look at every reservation we have so I don't forget anything and honestly I forgot about Oga's Cantina so I'm glad that I looked I kind of just go through anything I need to refer back to mostly it's the my Disney experience app just to kind of see what we have planned what check-in time is all that kind of stuff and I kind of just do a brief overview of each day so I pretty much just do what parks are we going to what reservations do we have and are there any nighttime shows that we want to see and what time are they so that is the kind of bare bones of what is on the weekly view so it's definitely a little bit more basic and then I'll go into more detail on the daily views so let's get into those done planning out each day and this is getting me like so 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 excited about this trip because it's definitely going to be super different because we're doing park hopper and we don't have a lot of plans which is kind of unlike us and I think the more that me and my mom and sister go together and the more we've been recently the less reservations and things that we want to be tied to so I'll just kind of go through each day and let you know kind of what our plans are for each day so on our travel day I'm gonna land in Orlando around noon. I'm gonna take the Mirrors Connect over to Pop Century, which is where we're staying for this trip, which is really fun. It's a great resort to stay at if you're gonna be doing a lot of park hopping because of the Skyliner access. So that's kind of why we decided to do everything that way. But I love Pop Century. I think it's a great value for your money. So I'm very excited to stay there again. So after I meet my mom and my sister over at Pop Century, we are gonna kind of just hang out. We might go to Disney Springs. We do have a dinner reservation at Sebastian's Bistro over at Caribbean Beach resort which is gonna be really really fun we ate there on our last trip and we were very surprised by how much we loved it so we want to go back so we're gonna go to Sebastian's Bistro at 4 30. One thing that has been on our list for years and years and years is to go to Enchanted Rose in the Grand Floridian. I don't know if you can call it a bar it's more like a lounge and it's Beauty and the Beast themed but in like the most beautiful way so my sister loves Beauty and the Beast so I the fact that we have not been here is kind of insane and we've been wanting to go for years so I think this time we're gonna be able to make it happen because we have a whole lot of time on our travel day to do kind of whatever we want. For our first park hopping day we are planning on knocking out Animal Kingdom because we were kind of talking about what our plans were. We were like okay there's four parks and there's only three days that we're gonna do park hopper so one park is definitely gonna get the boot where we're only gonna go to that park one time and it's Animal Kingdom. So I think we can get everything done that we wanna do in Animal Kingdom in one morning. So that's what we're gonna do the first day. We're gonna do Animal Kingdom and Hollywood Studios. The nice thing is there's no park reservation. So if we decide, you know what, we wanna flip flop the days, we totally can decide that the morning of. But the first day we are planning on doing Animal Kingdom and Hollywood Studios. So our plan is to get a virtual queue for Guardians and hope that we can kind of just pop over to Epcot real quick to ride Guardians and then go over to Hollywood Studios but it kind of depends on how the timing works out you know because with the virtual queue you don't really get to control what time you go so we're going to join the queue and just kind of see what happens our plan is to go for early park entry at 7 30. i've had good luck rope dropping flight of passage so that's probably going to be our plan and then our first lightning lane is usually not be river journey so then we just knock that one out too and then we're kind of done in pandora you know unless we want to come back for food or drinks but then we're kind of done with those two big rides and then a lot of times we try to ride the safari in the morning too which is really really nice it's a great time to ride the safari because the animals are super active. So maybe we'll knock that out and just kind of see what we want to do after that. But one thing that is on my must do for Animal Kingdom is Nomad Lounge. I have still not been there. It just hasn't worked out for me in the past. Every time I've tried to go, the waitlist has 
shut down immediately as soon as they opened up so i am going to be ready i'm going to be at the entrance of nomad lounge at 10 15 they open at 10 30 so that is like my one must do i think in animal kingdom this time but other than that we're just going to kind of have like a nice animal kingdom morning so the reason we paired animal kingdom and hollywood studios it seems kind of random but the reason we paired them that way is for lightning lanes so we can kind of knock out all the lightning lanes we want to do in animal kingdom first thing in the morning and then we're going to start stacking lightning lanes for later so basically the way lightning lanes work Work is when you buy Genie Plus gives you lightning lanes for almost every ride not every ride but almost every ride some of the big ticket items the big ticket attractions will be an individual lightning lane that you have to purchase separately so for example in Animal Kingdom Flight of Passage is an individual lightning lane which is why we plan on rope dropping it so that we don't have to pay extra just for that ride so our plan is to kind of knock out all the rides we want to do with lightning lanes another ride we really like is Dinosaur but honestly the wait is usually not that long so we could potentially do the standby queue so kind of just playing it by ear everest usually doesn't have a long wait but basically after we knock out the ones we want we're gonna start stacking lightning lanes sorry the angle changed my camera totally died but basically what i was saying is you can either scan into a lightning lane and then immediately book another one or once you've kind of done all the ones you want what you can do and what i recommend doing especially for hollywood studios because there's so many rides is to do the two hour window so basically it means if you're not going to scan in to a lightning lane for over two hours so let's say it's noon and you're booking a slinky dog dash lightning lane for 4 30 p.m obviously i'm not going to be able to scan into that lightning lane until 4 30 p.m so instead what you can do is every two hours you can book another lightning lane so you don't have to scan in to that 4 30 to be able to book more so in that example at 12 o'clock i would book a lightning lane for slinky dog dash at 4 30 then at two o'clock i can book another one so then let's say we'll book tower of terror for 5 30 and then at four o'clock you can book another one so let's say we book rock and roller coaster for six o'clock so now i have three lightning lanes stacked up for the evening so that's kind of how i stack up my lightning lanes for hollywood studios especially because there's so many rides that i want to do but basically that's the reason why we paired animal kingdom and hollywood studios Studios was for the purposes of stacking lightning lanes for Genie Plus. So we don't have a whole lot of plans in Hollywood Studios. Our only plan is for Oga's Cantina at 510. We love Oga's Cantina. We can't wait to go back. I know my mom wants to try Woody's Lunchbox. For Lunchbox Tart, they also have really good dairy-free grilled cheese for me and my sister. So we might try Woody's Lunchbox for dinner. So our next park hopping day, we are doing Magic Kingdom and Epcot. The reason we paired these together was because they're both monorail parks. So there is a monorail that takes you between Magic Kingdom and Epcot. I have not ridden the monorail a whole lot so we're really excited to utilize it for park hopping we are planning on doing a virtual queue for tron i'm really hoping we can ride it in the morning because we we're planning on doing magic kingdom in the morning and then epcot in the afternoon the reason we are only doing epcot in the afternoon for these park hopping days is because the food the festival booths are not open until like 11 o'clock i think so i remember that being a problem last time that we started walk we got to epcot we started walking around the world showcase because we come in from France right because we're taking the Skyliner over but nothing was open so we couldn't eat anything and then we had to backtrack and so we were like let's just do Epcot in the evenings but essentially what we're gonna do is a whole morning in Magic Kingdom before going to Epcot on this day and then on our last day we're gonna pop back to Magic Kingdom just for the late evening for Happily Ever After and maybe a few rides so the only park we're only going to once is Animal Kingdom so it kind of worked out well although on the last day we are doing three parks in one day so we'll see how it goes so we're gonna go for early park entry to Magic Kingdom at 7 30 get a virtual queue for Tron hopefully we can ride it before we have to leave we don't have a whole lot of plans I don't think there's a lot of good food at Magic Kingdom but one thing I have been wanting to try is the Nutella fruit waffle so that's kind of on my list but who knows what's gonna happen so we'll just kind of play it by ear and see what happens but then we'll probably take the monorail over to Epcot so that is our next park day the day after is our rest day the reason I built in a rest day was because I wanted to get some b-roll of some previous resorts that I stayed at so that I can do some resort reviews for you so that is kind of one thing that's on my agenda and whether my sister or my mom will come with me I'm not sure but I do kind of want to go to a couple different resorts so this day honestly we're probably gonna sleep in that is gonna feel really really nice to sleep in on a Disney day and me and my mom and my sister have never done a rest day before so this can be really really nice another thing that kind of inspired us to do the rest day was on our last trip we stayed at Caribbean Beach Resort and they have a beautiful main pool right we had a pool that was closer to the Trinidad section where we were staying which is kind of the furthest section but we wanted to go to the main pool because it was very pretty and had a slide and all that kind of fun stuff so we had 30 minutes to go swimming 
took 10 minutes to walk there. We got in the pool for 10 minutes and then we had to walk back to get ready for our dinner reservation. So it was kind of a joke. Like we literally got in the pool for like seven minutes. So that is also kind of a reason we decided to do a rest day. We want to actually enjoy the pool. So kind of the main thing we're doing on the rest day is going over to Animal Kingdom Lodge, which I'm so excited about because Animal Kingdom is my favorite park and I've never been to Animal Kingdom Lodge. And we're going to have dinner at Sanaa, which I'm very, very excited about. I've heard the bread service is amazing. The food looks amazing. I'm a little bit crazy and I looked up on the day that we're going what time the sun sets and I booked our reservation for that time so that'll be like the perfect sunset savanna dinner so our plan for our last park day is to go to hollywood studios in the morning do a 7 a.m virtual queue sign up for guardians so that will be at 7 a.m and then park entry is actually 8 30 early park entry is actually at 8 30 for hollywood studios this day so we're gonna go and rope drop rise we tossed around the idea of paying for lightning lane but i was like let's just go back to hollywood studios in the morning one day and then we can rope drop rise and then we don't have to pay for quite as many lightning lanes since we're already gonna be paying for genie plus so we're gonna rope drop rise and then we're going to do a couple other rides in Hollywood Studios and my sister loves the Beauty and the Beast show so I'm sure that we'll go see that and just kind of enjoy Hollywood Studios one last time and then we'll go over to Epcot, ride Guardians, do the Flower and Garden Festival and then this is the day that we're actually going to take the monorail back to Magic Kingdom and watch Happily Ever After. So those are kind of our plans for our trip. I'm really really excited. I think it's going to be a lot of fun. I am so excited to make the vlogs for you and I love making the vlogs. It makes my trip so much more fun and magical and then when i come home i love to edit them and it's so fun for me so i really really truly am so excited but let's kind of make a vision board so the way that i make a vision board is i go on pinterest and kind of take any pictures that i like save them to my ipad and then i upload them into my little vision board spot in my planner so i'm going to make a vision board and then i'll show you what i come up with picture of what my vision board looks like and I think it turned out really really pretty I tried to lean into kind of the pastel the pretty spring colors because of it being spring and flower and garden and I think it turned out really really pretty I love using Pinterest I feel like you find the cutest photos on there so I love it like down to the actual t-shirt actual vintage t-shirt that I have and I'm bringing to the new emoses that we have and the bag that I have. I have a lot of nods to my own personal style. I love the way it turned out. So that is it for my plan with me for Disney. I hope this was really helpful for you. If you're not already, make sure you follow me over on my Instagram so you can see some real time updates from my trip. But thank you so much for watching. If you like this video, make sure you give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel, it really helps me out. And I will see you in my pack with me. <laughs>